On this episode of Josh's Car Corner, the radio in the Tacoma gets a big time upgrade. Love the Beast, great documentary. in the middle of June so it's 100 degrees or warmer every day so it seemed like the perfect time to install a new radio in the Tacoma. This is something I have wanted to do for a while because the truck did come with an aftermarket radio right here this this Pioneer unit um, and it was okay sound sounds good uh, it's got a DVD player built in and a touch screen but it doesn't have Bluetooth on board it doesn't have HD radio um, Hooking up Sirius XM to it would be very expensive. The adapter's $200. Uh, if you wanted to do Bluetooth, that adapter's over $100. So it just didn't seem worth it to me. And the big thing that really bothered me about it is it, the steering wheel controls did not work. So I wanted to upgrade to a different radio and I'd done some research and I, would, I made the decision right away that I didn't want a disc player anymore because I don't listen to CDs. I don't need to be watching DVDs in the truck so i went with a uh, media player unit so the great thing about that is, is you save a little money on the disc you get a little bigger screen and it does everything i needed to do so this new radio is a kenwood unit a dmx 7704s it's got bluetooth built in it's hd radio built in sirius xm capable um but the big thing is it does android auto or apple carplay either or so I can plug my phone into it now and get my uh, sat nav directions right on the radio. Um, and it can also play videos via USB if I so desire. So I figured if I'm gonna install the radio, I might as well film it because you can install a radio a bunch of different ways. And there's the quick and cheap and easy way to do it, um, which lots of people do and most people don't have problems. but myself when I do something I prefer to do it the way a professional would do it and do it what I consider to be the right way so taking a little extra time to do a really quality job uh, will pay dividends down the road as you will see so what we're gonna start with here is me installing an additional rack of steering wheel controls on the steering wheel because from the factory it just came with buttons on the left hand side but if you got the advanced radio of the JBL unit you got three extra phone buttons on this side but being me, I found out that there was even more buttons you could get if you were willing to search a little farther abroad. So the buttons that I have right here are actually out of Japan, and they're, I think, for the Asian and some Eastern Euro uh, European markets. So the first thing you're gonna see in the process is me installing these buttons in the steering wheel, and then it goes on from there to building a wiring harness, putting it in the truck, testing everything out, uh, the whole process to get everything working right took about a week and you're going to see that all unfold right now so take a look okay so here i am i'm about to put these new steering wheel controls in the truck i got them right here they're going to go right there and i've just done this to see how hard it would be this is probably the easiest airbag to get out i've ever seen each side has got these two little tabs on it all i gotta do is put a screwdriver in there and just gently they fall right out and inside, there are little T30 screws that you gotta do. They're tight, but you pop those out and then they're retained in these little plastic things and this is all that holds the airbag in. So all you gotta do is pull these back a little bit with one finger and then lift the airbag out. So I'm gonna try to do that here. So lift back and that side's out. And now lift back. And that side's out. And what we need to do is, I'll take this little guy off, this little block off plate, and then back here, see that connector? That's what the other side plugs into. And it's just gonna run across. So I'll put that in, and the controls will be installed. And there you go, the new buttons are installed. That is about one of the easiest things I have ever done on a vehicle. Caps are back on, and it is just that simple. And these are now connected. Now I know for a fact that this button, this button, and this button are gonna work because you could get those in America. These two I'm not unsure about. That's gonna require a call to iDatalink to see if we can write a custom firmware so I can make these two buttons work. 
Okay, so I'm out in the garage right now, just trying to stay out of the heat, and I just took the original radio out of the truck, and I just want to show a couple things off here. What's really cool is this already had an aftermarket radio, so it already had this cover. This is a metric cover that just goes over the opening. Um, and the way the radio mounts in there is actually pretty simple. It just has this plastic bracket, which isn't the sturdiest thing in the world, and it just screws to that, and then there's two screws there, and then two farther back down there that hold it in. And then what's back here so far is four factory connectors, and I think all of these are going to be on the harness for the new iData link. There's also this aux port that used to be in there, but I don't think I'm going to need this anymore, so I'm considering just taking it out. But what I want to show you is what a crappy radio wiring job looks like. So this is the harness that was on the old radio. So the connection for it is right here. That's what comes off the radio. And then you have to attach it. This is probably just a metric kit to attach it to the plugins on um, the truck. And the steering wheel controls were not hooked up in any way. But they use these twist-on connectors, which you can use. But as you can see, it makes a mess of wires and it just is cluttered and unorganized. So now I'm going to show you the correct way to build a radio wiring harness. Okay, so I'm sitting in my office right now and I've been working on putting this harness together. So you saw the bad way to put a harness together using those just twist on connectors. The proper way to do it is to use a soldering iron and splite and shrink tube slid over it to protect all the fittings. So that's what I'm doing here and I've even gone to a little more detail here. I actually got a bunch of different colors of splice tubing. So I've got green here for speaker wires or wires that are just carrying a data signal and no power. Then I've got red for my main power wires and my illumination too. Then for my continuous, I went and got yellow stuff. So uh, that's for my 12 volt continuous. And then the last wire I got to do here is the ground wire. And I got black shrink tubing for that. Just so anyone could quickly look at this harness and know exactly what they're looking at, whether something is just speaker or signal, power, what kind of power, and ground. The way you want to do this is take your wires and start with two bare wires and have about, oh, an inch to an inch and a half exposed on each side. And what you want to do is you want to twist them together. So you want to take and just, I always do just one end at a time, and just kind of turn it over on itself and then do the same thing on the other end. And what you're left with, you want to be as straight as possible. So your shrink tubing will slide over it easier. You don't want a crooked splice either. It's gonna be easier for the solder to flow. So just get yourself any decent soldering iron, 30 to 50 bucks at um, an electronic store should do you. You don't have to get a $100 one or anything super fancy to do this. The important thing is to get the right kind of solder. This is rosin core solder, very thin, and it's 60-40. So it's 60% tin, 40% lead. And you want it to be really thin so it melts quickly, and you want it to have that rosin core because it's got flux built into it right away, and that means you don't have to clean your parts before you solder them. The flux will take care of that. So let's come back over here, get my gun heated up, and it shouldn't take too awful long. And what I do just to test is I just start touching my solder to the tip. And when it starts melting, I know I'm starting to get enough heat to start getting it on the wires. And what you want to do is you want it to flow. So it'll start to melt, and then you just want to stick with it, and you'll see it melt and run, and then you just want to keep moving in one direction so once this gets hot enough here, the solder will start to melt through the wire. And that's what you want. You want to penetrate and go all the way through the wire. Because that will improve your connection. And once it starts running, you should be able to just keep going with it. And just keep walking along and let it flood and melt. So just keep walking along and keep moving your heat along with it. And it should just keep melting. And you want it to flow all the way through. You don't just want it to puddle on top. That's not going to do any good. Just finish up right here. Okay, and then I just like to go over it one more time quickly with the heat just to make sure all the solder, the excess solder flows through and out and there aren't any puddles left. Okay, so that is good. Now, 
take our shrink tube and we'll slide that over and you want to do this quickly okay there we go we got the splice tube over now what we want to do is take a heat gun or if you don't have a heat gun you can just get a really good uh, hair dryer on set on the high setting that can work too and I'm just gonna put this on the low setting so you just go back and forth nice and slow and this will pretty quickly heat up this shrink tube and shrink it around our soldered connection it's got that side pretty good I'm just gonna do this side a little bit just to be sure it's all shrunk and there we go so now the other thing I like to do is, now that I've got all my connections done, is just to better organize stuff, because there is a lot going on here. I mean, you've got all this, that some most of this plugs into the truck, but then we've got also extra wires here coming off the radio harness that we're not gonna use. So I just electrical tape those together. Some of these I will use at a later date, but right now I'm not going to. Uh, one of those being the parking brake switch wire. I'm gonna do something different with that other than what the factory intends. And then also, I'm going to use in places where I've got a bunch of wires together, this stuff. This is just loop, and you can expand it out, you run your wires into it, and then it snaps together. And that'll give you a much better way of organizing wiring, uh, so things don't get caught under the dash, and everything just stays much more orderly. So I'm going to be putting this on here too, and I'll show you the finished product when I'm done. Okay, one more thing I have to do before I put everything in the truck. I have to upload the firmware for the truck into the MyStore. So I'm going to show you how I do that right now. So you bring up their website. And you got to log in with your account. And you have to register your MyStore to it. And then I just got to pick everything here by the vehicle. So I couldn't do this before because it wants to know the serial number of the radio you're putting in. So I have to do it now. So 2009... Toyota Tacoma select trim level I don't have JBL that's gonna ask some other questions and the big one is what kind of steering wheel do you have I really have five buttons here but they only support three so three it is and then I just need to tell it what brand of radio I got and I got a Kenwood DMX 7704S. There we go. Here's the thing. It wants the serial number, so i got to put this in. Okay, that's done. So now it's in there. Yep, I used the T01 harness. Choose the systems to retain. The gauges for sure. I don't need radar detector integration. Steering wheel controls, yes. Factory amplifier, I don't think it has one. I'm just gonna say no, I don't think it has one. I think that's a JBL thing only. So we'll go next. And now you can specify in even more detail what the buttons will do. So you have the press once feature and then you have press and hold. So you can do even more with the buttons. And I was gonna do more with the buttons. So let's see here. Track up if I hold can be next source, track down give me previous source and then for this I want to do the gauges screen and if I hold it I want vehicle info so I think we're all good there and if I don't like these settings for some reason I can go back in and change them later with a firmware update this is not a one-time deal okay flashing so it must be doing it right now Okay, flashing completed. So it's got a firmware in it now. Okay, all done. And I, I know this looks a little imposing, but it's really not too bad. So this is what I've got going on. So this is everything that's coming off the radio right here. So I just divided this up. You've got front speakers, rear speakers, and all the power wires are right there. And then taped up what I'm not using here. And then also down here, these are some extra wires off the iDatalink Maestro thing. So uh, I might be using those at some point, but they were exposed right there, so I taped them up. I don't want anything shorting this unit out because it's expensive. And this is all the stuff that comes on the other end. So this extra thing comes on for the, for the harness. This is for a camera. 
that I think I'm gonna end up getting tapped into the rear view camera that's there right now, and this is the cool one. This is what goes to the diagnostic port under the dash, so that gets what, all the engine data into the Maestro, into the radio. So that's what I'm really looking forward to. So now that I've got all this done, I know I'm gonna have to take it in and out a bunch of times before everything is working the way it's supposed to. That's why I went to the trouble of doing all this, because I know it's not gonna just be in there the first time. So we'll go test it in the truck right now and see how everything works. All right, so I'm excited. Let's see what happens here. Just turn the key to accessory. Huh. Turn it all the way to on. And nothing's happening. Okay. I figured there's gonna be some speed bumps. I didn't think this would be one of them, that it wouldn't turn on at all. Do I have to hit the power button? Hold it? I got nothing, I got no power. I don't know what's going on. I've got no power to the Maestro. And if there's no power there, then there's no power getting to the radio. Okay, I figured it out. The problem is I'm just dumb. Forgot a connector. So let's try this again. All right. Got the main boot up screen. Let's see what we get here. All right, we can do language clock display. Can I do this all without taking this plastic off? Yes, I can. Select language American English. Yes. Okay, so let's go back. And clock. Well, here you go. We are GMT minus seven Arizona. GPS sync, that's fine with me. Let's see, camera. Rear cam. I'll mess with all that stuff later. So OEM setup demo finish. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so let's just start with radio and see. Oh, we got a beep. All right. So it turns on. Do I have buttons? Yes! And it sounds, I've got buttons. Does this mute it? Yep, that mutes it, okay. That changes station. Sounds like I've got the subwoofer. It's loading HD radio. I got my gauge cluster. Let's turn the and let's turn this on. See if we get anything. There are tons of empty Oh my God! Look at that intake air temp, 104 degrees. That's why there's hotels. RPM. Hotel tonight partners with awesome hotels. Fuel mile per hour load. I'll change all those gauges. Uh, let's do this. Oh, that's so cool. I am so pumped. All right, let's get out of that. It goes back to here. Now, if I hold it down, vehicle info. Okay, I've got no... Oh, wait. Yes! I've got PSI from one tire. The others aren't reading. Okay, that's weird, but I got battery voltage. I got check engine light. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I can't wait to monkey with this later. All right, well, it works. So now I just gotta figure the rest of this stuff out, which means taking it in and out a bunch more times and getting everything calibrated. Okay, it's the next day and I'm working on getting all the extras put in the truck right now. So I've already got the GPS antenna installed and the wire runs behind the dash here and along the trim and underneath and the wire for the OBD2 port, which is under there, that's already been run. Right now I'm working on the microphone, looking for a good place to put it, and the best place I could figure out was right there, and it runs the same way. But I needed a way to pull wires up to the thing here, and it's very tight back here, not a lot of room. And I thought I need something sturdy yet flexible to do that, so why not use my old friend solder? So I just pulled out a bunch and ran it down, and I've taped it, to my wires and I'm just going to use that to pull them up and there we go wires up so I'll tie everything back here then I've got to figure out what to do with all of this because as it stands right now radio does not fit in there if you just cram it in and I don't want it to rattle around and bounce especially that thing 
So I got to find a way to secure it all back there still. Okay, I've got most of the harness now tucked underneath this bar back here. So there's a lot more room than there was before. I think I found a mounting point for the Maestro. I think I'm going to put it right back there with this Velcro. It seems like it'll fit in there pretty good. So let's just get that attached. So there, that should sit there and have plenty of room to get the radio in and then we'll plug all the bits of the harness back into it and we'll slide it back in there and see how it works now. But that's a lot better than it was before and should be easy to get everything back out to when I need to. Good Sunday morning everybody. I've had the radio installed in the truck now for about a week and I've finally got most of the things dialed in so I just wanted to show everybody what it looks like now. So it looks exactly the same. However, all the functions now work. So it'll fire up here. So what is going on now is the rear camera's hooked up to it. I got the Bluetooth function working. Um, and everything that is I'm able to work, use on the radio now is working. So I'm just gonna turn the volume down here and mute it. By the way, all the steering wheel controls now work. And um, what I've come to discover is that these right here, the factory ones, light up orange, just like the cluster does. These, for some reason, light up green. So for whatever market they're from, they use green instead of orange. So that's just going to be a little funny thing when I'm driving in at night. It's not a big deal. The buttons do work. Call and hang up work and the voice thing works. These, unfortunately, do not work. I cannot make work because the iData link company does not support them. So... They'll just be there. Maybe someday I'll find a way to make them work, but for now, no big deal. What I love is now push this mode button and switch over, and you get all these awesome gauges now. So, and I've been using these uh, every day. So I've got it set up. I've got coolant temp, average mile per gallon, intake air temp, voltage, and instant MPG. <laughs> and by using this, I have discovered that I have been driving this thing incorrectly. See, when I've been slowing down, what I had been doing is dropping down a couple of gears and running down, slowing down on the engine, using engine braking. And I came to find out that this thing doesn't cut off fuel like the GTO does or any other GM does. It doesn't have DFCO. So it's best to be in the highest gear possible and coast down. You actually get more miles per gallon decelerating with the engine barely turning than you do with it revving and slowing down. It's not cutting fuel at higher revs. So just by doing that, I've gone from an average of 21 miles per gallon to 21.6. So I'm saving half a mile per gallon just because I have that information available to me now. It's got a page two with more things too that I don't really look at. Throttle percentage, load, MAF airflow, timing. There's not a whole lot of PIDs it can read, but it does have these and these are important because now I know exactly what the cool temp is. And, and by the way, Toyota did an awesome job on the cooling system on this thing because I can be sitting in 108 degree heat with the AC on full power and the coolant temp never gets above 194. So they did a really good job on the cooling system of this truck. Okay, so the other thing I want to show you is the backup camera, which is now running through the radio. So I got to set the guidelines up still, but to do this was actually not too complicated. The wires uh, on the back are not that hard to plug in, and it's just an RCA connection on the back. So here's what I ended up doing. So if you come down here, behind this little flap here, there are some fuse panel and some extra connectors. This connection right here, this one right here, this little square one, that's got the wiring for the video output feed for the camera. And it's down here right now. So you just have to cut out the red and the black wire and run them into an RCA cable. You just gotta take the braiding and rip it out and then get the braiding going on the RCA cable, twist them together, tape it together. And what I've come to discover is the quality of the cable really matters. So this cable looks kind of blue and thick. It doesn't really look like an RCA cable. It's a monster cable. It's an old monster component cable that I had laying around. When I first did this, I did a real little thin RCA video cable that was yellow with a really thin gauge wire. And I was getting lines on the screen. And I came to find out it's because it just wasn't good enough quality wiring. So the monster cable, the image is perfect. It looks super crystal clear. 
The other thing you have to do to trigger the reverse is you gotta have a reverse trigger under the radio. So that's on the other side of the truck. I'll show you here. So you fold down and take out the glove box. And then back here, you've got this connector right here that has got this yellow wire and red wire on top. This red wire is the power feed for the backup lights. So then you just take a tap splice or whatever you want and you just tap into it, run that to the reverse wire on the radio, and then that'll trigger the camera when you go into reverse. So that's, it's pretty simple. It's actually amazing how easy it is to make all the custom stuff work on this truck. So I just wanna come back over to the radio here. So we'll get off this mode. So when you go to the main menu, all the different functions that work, the Bluetooth through the radio, one thing I discovered, if you're having difficulty getting your Bluetooth working, you have to have your music app on your phone turned on or the media audio mode of Bluetooth won't even work. I figured that out the hard way when, after trying to mess with it for a day and a half, calling Kenwood, calling iDatalink, and finally figured that out. So that feature works good. The HD radio is awesome. If you've never had HD radio, it's really cool because you get so much more information and the signal is so much clearer. It is CD quality audio. So if you'd like listening to local radio, HD radio is what you want. So I get my station information. When a song's playing, I get all that information. Sometimes the stations will even put up the album cover in that corner there so you can even see what the album looks like that you're listening to. Other features, the Sirius XM, I haven't got the antenna for that yet. I'm not sure if I will. Um, I might at some point. And the front camera is the next thing I'm gonna get. I don't have that yet, but there's a front camera you can get with this thing that works directly off the radio and it records and you can watch the recordings on the radio. So I might get that at some point. So the speakers are factory as far as I know. There are only front speakers. The, the six by nines here and the tweets up here, there's nothing back here. Although there are cutouts in the doors themselves in the inside metal four five and a quarter speakers. So people cut these the, these interior trim pieces out, this panel right here, and mount grills, and then you can have speakers back there. Um, you just gotta run your own wires. And the other thing you have to deal with is this factory subwoofer. The rear wiring feeds the signal to this subwoofer for the rear speakers. So you gotta be a little custom, but I've got six pre-outs on this thing. I've got two fronts, two, two rears, and two subs. So getting power back there to run things won't be a problem. So the installation on this thing was a success and I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. But the question you might be asking yourself is, why didn't I do this to the GTO? Well, the reason is, is I wanted to see how this whole system worked to see if I wanted to try to put this same kind of system in the GTO. However, there are going to be a couple of difficulties with that. The biggest one being that iDatalink, the company that makes the Maestro that talks to the car, they don't support the GTO, technically. They said the vehicle information part would probably work because it's a GM computer that they support in other GM vehicles. So I just have to get the right firmware for the right vehicle. It's the steering wheel controls that would not work. Um, so what I might do is get a dialogue going with them and get their other one that's their steering wheel controls that are just for steering wheel that is programmable and I might figure out the resistances for the buttons send that information back to them and say look if you guys write a firmware for the maestro I can tell you that people will buy this for their cars because I know how many of you out there have a GTO and you want to have the extra gauges but you don't want to have the A-pillar pod or the center cluster pod or you already have those gauges and you want more and the gauges that you can get in those places only do one thing. So if you could get whatever gauges you wanted on the radio, that would be a solution to a lot of guys' uh, issues. So you could see coolant temps, battery voltages, anything you want when you want to see it. I'm sure a lot more PIDs will work on a GM computer than they do on a Toyota computer. Because the only other alternative out there is this Australian-made radio that you can get but it's $600 and it doesn't come with cameras and it doesn't come with HD radio. Um, and it's just got, it's got some other things that I don't, not so sure how well they're gonna work over here because the radio is designed to work in an Australian market. The cost of all this, I got it added up in my head. The radio I got on Amazon for $330. The Maestro I got on Amazon for I think $140. 
the T01 wiring harness from the Maestro, that was $40. And then it was just my blood, sweat, and tears making it all work. Oh, I did get one little USB thing. Oh, I should show you that quick. I did get one little USB thing right down there. I was hoping that would fit perfectly in that factory slot, but it doesn't. So what I did is there used to be an aux input thing there with a three and a half millimeter uh, headphone jack. I ripped the guts out of it and just left the body so there'd be something to slide and lock in there. And I put that little USB thing in the body. So that's sitting in there and that's connected to the radio. So I can plug my phone in for charging or to do Android Auto. That was about $8. So in the end, I've got a radio unit that cost me $520, $530, which is 70 less than the Australian unit, and it does more stuff that I would want it to do, and it's because it's designed for this market. I hope somebody will buy that Australian radio and try it over here and see how it works, so then we can get input on that too and see if that would be a better option than what I'm trying to do, because those radios can do vehicle diagnostic information as well. You just have to get a little Bluetooth adapter that plugs into the OBD2 port and then it transmits the data over to the radio. And you can do that on other radios you can get here in the States too. And if I couldn't, and if I can't make the Maestro setup work, that could be another option to do on the Kenwood radio. I will say I really like that Kenwood unit. I, I don't miss having a disc player at all. And the radio works really well. It's got so many different customizable features and it's just ready to do so much stuff. It's a great unit. So I would highly recommend the Kenwood unit. Let me know if you'd be interested in this setup for your GTO and I will see if I could convince iDatalink to write a firmware for it. But once again, thanks for watching Josh's Car Corner and we'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching the show. If you like the show, let me know by clicking that subscribe button. And you can always follow what's going on with the show on Instagram at Josh's Car Corner.